Spanner Wireless is a single dynamic driver TWS, which comes at a whopping price of $500. It comes with topology diaphragm technology. What's that, you might ask? It simply refers to the special nanoparticle coating applied to the surface of the diaphragm. That's meant to result in a more natural and detailed sound. In terms of features, it's both lacking and really feature-packed at the same time. Let me explain. Being a TWS, it needs to have a DAC built-in, but it's not a regular DAC in this case. It uses an R2R structure, which is basically a resistor ladder array on a chip. That's the same approach Heifelman has taken with their full-size desktop amps, like the EF400 and the EF600 which also include an R2R DAX. Their desktop amp DAC combos have proven to be sounding very good. Unfortunately, I can't say how much of that is because of the DAC chip itself, but either way, Svenor Wireless has it. In terms of connectivity, it has Bluetooth 5.2, which is almost the latest version of Bluetooth. That's really nice to see, but we're not offered a lot of wireless codecs to choose from. Rather one that I would say is really good. LDAC developed by Sony which offers 24-bit and 192kHz bit depth and sampling rate accordingly. It's important to note that LDAC is NOT a truly wireless codec. However, in practical terms, this is unlikely to be a significant concern. In the context of using wireless in-ear monitors, the majority of listeners won't be exclusively listening to lossless music. And even if, the difference is generally not huge. For some, it's even hardly audible. The connectivity has proven to be stable and didn't cause me any issues like some other wireless IEMs, and I would really expect it to work perfectly for that price. Another feature that's nice to see is the inclusion of three modes of ANC. There is Hi-Fi mode, which means ANC off, transparency mode, and ANC on. While it's nice to see ANC being included, it's definitely not amazing. From my testing, it doesn't do a very good job of reducing outside noises. Don't get me wrong, it still helps, but not to the extent you might expect for that price. The charging case that it comes with is fairly bulky and pretty heavy. It's in this kind of diamond-shaped form. It doesn't collect many fingerprints though, that's a good thing. There is a USB-C charging port on the bottom and a button that lets you control some stuff on the rear side. I'm not going to go over the controls themselves, as you can look that up by yourself. I have no intention of wasting your time on that. The earbuds are also very big, but luckily lightweight. In terms of the materials, they're made almost entirely out of the silver plastic, with the addition of carbon fiber looking material on the swan shaped piece, hence the name, Swainer Wireless. Comfort wise, they're pretty decent and give you a lot of options but none of them is ideal for me specifically. Their odd, big shape is something I had to get used to, and I did after some time. However, there is one problematic thing, at least for me. The carbon fiber part is a little rough in touch, more so than the silver plastic. And while earbuds are in my ears, it's noticeable. It has a sort of scratchy feeling to them. You're getting a bunch of different ear tips, 8 pairs to be specific. I'm sure that most of you will figure out the perfect pair for you, as there is a lot to choose from. Let's finally talk about their sound. It's the most important after all. Tonality first. It's entirely dictated by the ear tips you decide to use. For example, with the regular style big silicon ones, you're getting a bit softer highs and a huge bass boost. Too big for my liking. I assume that bass heads are going to be satisfied with them. However, this silicon double kind of style is keeping a good balance. They reduce the lows a bit to a tolerable level and bring up some highs. I found them to be the most tonally balanced. On the other hand, the foam ones were definitely a no-go for me. They made the sound very thin, took away the fullness and fun. So in terms of the tonality, you can choose whatever you like, as they're extremely sensitive to tip rolling. Plus, you're getting a lot of them included in the package. Here we go. That's where the Sway in our wireless shines the most. I found the soundstage to be decently wide. It didn't give me an in-head type of experience, which is often unheard of in the IEM world. I'm not saying that none of the IEMs sound wide. There are indeed some, and Swainar Wireless just happens to be one of them. Sound separation was also pretty nice. Usually, the instruments and vocals are well separated, unless it was a very warm or bassy track, 
and I used the ear tips, which emphasized that even more. Then everything was just drowning in bass. Especially in the lower mids, bass and sub bass region, the dynamic range is excellent. It punches and slams very strongly and it makes for a very fun experience. Dynamic drivers usually do a better job at punch and slam than other types like planar magnetic and electrostatic. Speaking about detail, it's pretty odd. Usually in headphones, the details are mainly reproduced in the upper frequencies. Swainer Wireless does it quite a bit differently. I'm unable to tell if that's because of their design, driver or the codec being lassy. Either way, the bass is very very textured and detailed here. That is not particularly present throughout the entire midrange though, as the midrange itself is quite recessed tonally and it is never meant to be very detailed in music anyway, as that's where the most melodies and all that are placed. In the top end, it's also fairly resolving for a TWS. I'd say that it's surprisingly resolving for something in its class. I like that a lot, as I'm a fan of hearing minor details in the tracks. But still, the low end was seemingly more resolving than the top end frequencies. Such a weird experience. I don't think that everybody is going to jump in and purchase a $500 wireless IEM, as people often associate wireless technology with lower fidelity sound. I think that Hyphen is trying to break that belief and come up with a decent product that shows what's possible while remaining wireless and fairly compact. Some people are absolutely okay with buying crazy expensive wired IEMs. There are many top-of-the-line ones that cost over $2000, and there is a market for that. While you have to pay a lot for the Swainer Wireless, it also offers a lot. However, I'm convinced that most of its price is not what it costs Hyphenman to make these. But a huge portion of that budget went to the R&D, research and development, to figure out how to fit everything that it offers in a small package. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and feel free to watch the next video.